everyone and welcome back to my channel. In today's video, I want to talk about neurological disorders and leopard geckos. A lot of people will watch my Enigma Syndrome video and then they'll immediately just say, my gecko has Enigma Syndrome, period. And a lot of times, like probably like 90% of the time, the people who DM me pictures of their geckos and say they have Enigma Syndrome, it's not even a neurological disorder and it's especially not Enigma Syndrome. So by this video, I hope that I'm going to be able to get some people to see it and see that their gecko has something else going on or if it does have a neuro issue, it's not Enigma Syndrome. There's tons of things that can cause what would look like to the lay person a neurological disorder. So we're gonna talk about that. So this video is gonna go over the causes, the symptoms, and the treatments. Now keep in mind, we're gonna be talking about neurological disorders, but a lot of the symptoms that people's geckos have aren't actually from neurological issues. So I will be talking about that in this video as well. Before we get started, I ask that you please subscribe and hit that notification bell. I don't know which is on which side, but please do it. I could use the numbers. I could use your attention. And here we go. Oh, a little bit of backstory for you. I have like 11, I think, geckos with neurological issues. I have a lot. It's like my specialty. If, if anyone has a specialty in life, mine is neurologically disabled geckos. Also geckos with birth defects and stuff, but particularly neurological issues. I have many geckos with Enigma syndrome. I have many geckos with white and yellow syndrome. I have geckos who have neurological issues and there is no like morph related syndrome that they have. They just have a baseline neuro issue. I have geckos that people probably suspect have neurological issues, but they don't. It's just, I have a lot, okay? I have a lot and we'll talk about it. But that's where my experience comes from. I've been keeping geckos with neurological issues since 2016, so a long time now. I'm old. All right, so first we're gonna talk about the causes because I think I would talk about symptoms first, but a, a lot of people will just think it's immediately a neuro issue, even though there's plenty of other things it could be. So for example, one of the most common people that I get in my DMs, they'll show me their gecko and they'll say it's falling over all the time. It's got Enigma syndrome and it's a gecko that is not an Enigma and it has metabolic bone disease. Metabolic bone disease, because it causes a softening of the limbs and even a breaking of the limbs, will cause your gecko to have unstable balance and movements and they can fall over, flop on their back very easily that is going to be not a neurological issue, that's going to be an issue of supplementation and you're gonna have to figure that out with your vet. But metabolic bone disease is basically where the bones become brittle or soft and they bend and they break. And this can happen in the jaw, this can happen in the legs, this can happen in the back. And you'll notice that their body just slowly bends in shape. And it's because they're not getting enough calcium, so their body is taking the calcium from their bones. This condition is ultimately fatal if you do not get your gecko to have a vet intervention or if you don't immediately start putting calcium and D3 into them. And even if you do fix the metabolic bone disease there is no correcting of the limbs they will always stay bent so if they have a floppy jaw if they have a curved back if they have bent limbs that will always be evident that they had metabolic bone disease at one time but because metabolic bone disease can cause issues with balance a lot of people who are not well versed in leopard geckos will think that it's a neurological issue and they'll find my video and they'll comment on it and then they'll be in my DMs and I'm like, unfortunately, that is not the case. That's a gecko that doesn't have neuro issues. That's a gecko who has metabolic bone disease, which is honestly worse. However, there is a small amount of cases in reptiles where metabolic bone disease or the lack of proper supplementation actually causes them to have neurological issues that even once the calcium is fixed may persist. However, most times when people message me about that, it's because their gecko's inability to move is based on the fact that there's no calcium in their bones and they're softening. But keep in mind that some geckos or reptiles in general can have neurological issues from malnourishment or from poor supplementation. Another cause of neurological issues would be head injury. That can be seen across all different types of species of reptiles, not just leopard geckos, but all kinds. And basically, if they suffer any head trauma, whether it be external or internal, that can cause them to have neurological issues. If your gecko has head trauma, like sudden head trauma, whether that you dropped them, whether they got stepped on, whether they got bit in the head by another animal, 
whatever if they have sudden head trauma immediately go to the vet it can also be caused by like a tumor or a cyst growing in the head and if it puts pressure on the spine or the brain that can cause issues with mobility that's also going to require a vet but that's not like a sudden injury that's an overtime because typically a tumor or a cyst has to grow in the head before you begin to notice it but immediately go to the vet once you notice that any sort of head swelling go to the vet so two syndromes that can cause neurological issues are Endigma syndrome and white and yellow syndrome. I'm going to leave links down below for both of those specific syndromes. The thing I want to say about Enigma syndrome and white and yellow syndrome is that a lot of geckos don't have those syndromes. It is not like uncommon, but it's not so common that like when you buy a gecko from a pet store and you notice it has some wobbliness to it, that you can jump to the conclusion that it's one of those two because enigmas and white and yellows are typically not going to be available in pet stores unless it's like a specialty pet store or it's like overseas. I know people sometimes can get enigmas and white and yellows in pet stores across the ocean. I'm in the US for those who don't know. But here in the US, in like Petco's and PetSmart's, they're not selling Enigmas and white and yellows. It's possible, but it's really not common that you will come across either of those two syndromes in a pet store gecko. If you get a gecko off of Craigslist, oftentimes they'll be wanting to, you to pay more because they paid more for the morph. So like Enigmas and white and yellows are not going to be as cheap as like a normal, like standard morph, whether it just be like a baseline tangerine or like just a normal morph. They're going to be more expensive and so typically if you get them from Craigslist, they'll be labeled on Craigslist because the person wants more money for them. So it, you would first have to identify if your gecko is a white and yellow or an enigma. And with white and yellow, it's complicated because sometimes geckos who don't show white and yellow but have white and yellow lineage can have the syndrome. That makes it more challenging. But if I was you, I would not say that the gecko has enigma syndrome or white and yellow syndrome if you don't know it's morph because more likely than not it's neither of those two things it's something else i will leave resources for both of those syndromes down below if you want to familiarize yourself with them another thing that can cause neurological issues would be age they might just have really poor mobility when they get older and that might make you think they have neurological issues however it's just mobility so age could be a factor sometimes geckos are born with neurological issues due to an incubation fluctuation or bad genetics both of those situations you're going to notice that the gecko has neurological issues from like the moment you get it it's not just going to be an onset of them and the last thing i want to talk about is vision a lot of people whose geckos have like bad aim when they're hunting they'll just immediately say it has a neurological issue some geckos don't have the greatest vision particularly if they have like oversized eyes or undersized eyes or if they are an albino or if they're an albino eclipse which is where their whole eye is like one solid color just something to keep in mind that your gecko might have really bad eyesight and not actually a neurological disorder and that's why you see some like poor aim so now that i've covered all the things that can cause neurological disorders or can cause symptoms that people think are neurological disorders. Let's talk about the symptoms. There's a ton of them. So some of the symptoms are circling, having a wobbly gait, head bobbing, head tilting, death rolling, self-mutilation, stargazing, falling over, seizuring, being easily overstimulated or excitable, and shutting down. Shutting down basically means like they've gone catatonic, their eyes are closed, they're completely non-responsive to stimuli as a, because they've been overstressed and now they're just shutting everything out. So those are some of the symptoms. I'm going to include some footage on the screen of those, but it is not a complete like list. I don't have examples for every single one of those. A lot of them are as they sound. Circling is where the gecko walks in circles instead of walking straight. Having a wobbly gait is where a gecko topples over when they're walking. Head bobbing is where they lift their head up really fast and throw it back. Head tilting is where they hold their head with a tilt. Death rolling is where the gecko flops over onto its back and spins around really rapidly trying to right itself. Self-mutilation is where the gecko purposefully or not purposefully bites itself. Sometimes this can happen when they're hunting and their aim is poor and they bite themselves. Sometimes this can happen because the gecko is having such neurological distress that it just bites itself on purpose. It's not super common, but it definitely happens. Stargazing is where the gecko holds its head at an unnatural angle for a really long time and just like stares up at the ceiling or stares at the wall. Typically this lasts longer than just a couple seconds and it's not just your gecko looking at something. It's when they're like in a really unnatural like position either their head is tilted or straight up and they're just staring at absolutely nothing a seizure in a leopard gecko looks like a seizure in a lot of species where they like tense up and shake and they'll drool 
I've only ever seen a seizure in one leopard gecko, that's my leopard gecko Gilly, and I never hope to see it again. I also wanted to include some footage of my geckos being overstimulated. So basically what happens is they have a heightened response to stimuli. This is especially the case when it comes to interacting with them with food or with handling. So you might have a gecko who has neuro issues and never displays them unless you're feeding them or interacting with them. And that is just the case for some geckos. Care and treatment for geckos with neurological issues is gonna look different. If your gecko doesn't actually have a neurological issue, it just has poor vision or it has metabolic bone disease or something that is unrelated to a neuro issue but like it has symptoms that look like it such as falling over or having really bad aim or being easily excited so something you can do for that is to treat that specific issue if it has bad vision offer it less lighting in the enclosure and when you offer them food what i like to do for merlin is i cast a shadow over him with my body and then feed him because he has an easier time eating when it's completely dark and then for metabolic bone disease you're going to want to make sure you're offering like a surplus of calcium and d3 to make sure that they're getting all of their needs met so that their bones can harden again and they can begin to grow and flourish but if your gecko actually does have a neurological issue regardless of what the cause is you're going to want to treat them differently than you would an abled gecko if it comes from a situation of like they're born with it like an incubation fluctuation or enigma syndrome or something like that what you can do is offer them lifelong care what that means is you're gonna have to give them less stimulating environments you can't go like the full naturalistic route they can't have like substrate and things like that you might have to tong feed them you might have to help them get their shed off that sort of thing you're going to want to keep stress at a minimum in every way possible that includes handling that includes having an over enriching enclosure or having out time all those things are going to have to be at a minimum in order for your gecko to thrive because the more stress, the higher their symptoms. If your gecko has like a head injury and suddenly they have neurological issues from that head injury, make sure you're treating the head injury. If you treated it and now they just have neurological issues, it is what it is. It's probably never gonna go away. It could over time get better as they begin to heal, but it could stay forever. And in that case, you'll want to keep stress to a minimum. You don't want something that allows them to climb really high and fall down because they could injure their head again. So just keep that in mind. With abscess and tumor, you're definitely going to want to have that removed. If through the removal process, the gecko has a neurological issue or like it persists after the surgery, that's just something that's probably going to be around for a while. It could take a long time to go away through healing or it could be there forever. And you're just going to want to keep a low stress environment for them, just like you would a regular gecko who was born with a neurological issue. Euthanasia is something you're going to have to consider in all of these cases of neurological issues because if they get worse and the gecko is no longer able to function, like they can't walk around at all, they can't eat at all, they can't shed at all, they're bowel movements aren't happening normally. Like once their quality of life is severely impacted, then as a pet owner, it is your responsibility to seek out humane euthanasia for them. But regardless of whether or not your gecko has enigma syndrome or a neurological issue from head trauma or bad genetics or whatever, reduce the stress in their life. That would be less lighting, that would be less enclosure decor, a smaller space perhaps, less handling, less outside time. You might have to help them with shed or tong feeding. Sometimes you won't, sometimes you will. Treat the underlying issue if there is an underlying issue, so head trauma, you'll have to seek a vet for that, or if there's like a tumor or an abscess, you'll have to treat that separately. If you can treat the underlying issue, do so. If not, it's just going to be something that you have to deal with for the rest of the gecko's life. Keep in mind that for a lot of neurological issues, there is no cure. The symptoms will be there for their whole lives. Okay, so I hope all that made sense. It felt like I was a bit rambly, but there's so many things that can cause the symptoms of neurological issues or what people think are the symptoms of neurological issues but they're not actually a neurological issue like i said with metabolic bone disease or with poor vision so i hope this gave you some insight as to what might be going on with your gecko if you have any questions you can leave them down below and i'm happy to answer them i also answer questions really quickly on patreon if you're a patron over there you can ask some people on Patreon. As soon as they ask me a question, I'm, I'm good to give an answer. I can't answer as fast on Instagram or email because I just get flooded with DMs all the time, but Patreon is a place where I get notifications so I'm able to answer quickly. So if that's something you're interested in, that is down below. But again, if you leave a comment down here, me or someone else who has experience with geckos with neurological issues may be able to help you. That's all for this one. I hope you found this informational and insightful. If you did, please let me know by leaving a like, a comment. Also, please subscribe, hit that notification bell. And with all that said, I will see you guys in the next one.
Bye.